work with my guest Diane. Um, good morning. Uh, I've got seven minutes, so I'm going to try and keep it quite tight. Um, but I was very pleased to be invited to speak at this event. I think that sexism is a really important issue. And sexism isn't just about how society sees women. It isn't just about how men see women. It's about how we as women see ourselves. Because I think some of the most corrosive effects of sexism are the extent to which girls and women internalise sexist norms. I should say that I had two brushes early in life with organised feminism and they weren't auspicious. I mean, I am a feminist, happy to call myself a feminist, but I remember being in the sixth form of school and I read Spare Rib, which are then was a big magazine for feminists, and I'd read all the texts, Betty Friedan, Jermaine Greer, and I was really hyped with the whole feminism thing. So I think it's in my copy of Spare Rib, I found a women's group near where I lived, and I went along. Um, it was a bit disappointing, because it was full of what I saw as middle-aged housewives. They've all been younger than I am today, but yeah. <laughs> I was surrounded by middle-aged housewives. But I stuck with it. I read the text, I believed it in it all. And then we had a meeting and they were discussing doing a fundraiser. And one of these women said, yeah, 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 you know what we could do? We could have a black male stripper. And they all tittered. Um, then they looked at each other and then they looked at me. I realised this wasn't the place for me. Um, I had another go when I was at university, I was at Cambridge, and I went on to a women's group there. And it was fine. And then after, I think the second meeting I went to, they said, the next meeting, we're going to have a girl from the town. Now, because I, you know, I didn't come from that kind of background of people that normally went to Cambridge. I could only been there a month or so. I didn't quite understand the connotations of saying a girl from the town. Well, I turned up at the meeting the next week. There was indeed a girl from the town. And what they meant by that was a working class woman. And they sat this woman on a chair and they made her talk and they looked at her as if she was a laboratory specimen. And I thought, no, that's not for me. So I had two brushes of organised feminism early in life. I did actually, when I left uni, get involved in the black women's movement, which was a big thing in the 80s. But my point is, it's really important if we're going to build an anti-patriarchal uh, an anti and a feminist practice which is sustainable, that it reaches out and is relevant to working class women and black and minority ethnic and Muslim women. Because particularly in a place like Hackney, if you're not doing that, you're really only building what you're doing on quite a narrow base. Nor is it the case that black and minority ethnic women are interested in feminism. I gave a, a speech earlier this year on the pornification of society. Well, I'll, I'll return to that. And because I have a big database of black women, I invited a number of women. And they were really interested, but they were really thrilled to be invited. And I realised that by and large, feminists do not reach out. I'm not suggesting they deliberately don't do it, but feminism, as we know, it does not embrace, embrace black and minority ethnic women. But what I would say is this in the remaining four minutes I have that in some ways, in terms of sexism, we've moved forward, particularly if you count heads, okay? There are more women at the tops of companies, you see black uh, women reporters on the television. I worked in television before I became a member of Parliament. And when I worked in television, you didn't have any women foreign reporters. It was just something that women didn't do. I remember the very first one, Kate Hayden, that. Nah, it's very common. So you've got more women doing things they couldn't have done 20 or 30 years ago. But in some ways, I think women are imprisoned in a more, in a more oppressive, sexist narrative than ever. With too many girls, too many girls, even at this school and schools in Hackney, who believe the way to fame and fortune is to pump their breasts up the silica. Mm -hmm. There are too many girls, even girls at this school and other schools in Hackney, who believe the way to fame and fortune is to pump their bottoms full of silica mm -hmm. and become a side video dancer. And you may think that's a joke. A girl in Hackney died, uh, I think it was the year before. She went, she went to America, got her bottom pumped came back, still wasn't big enough for her, went back again, and she died because she was doing it in a hotel room with an unqualified practitioner. 
Now, to me, I mean, when I was a teenager, I broadly believed that working hard at school and getting a job was the way I would better myself. It seems to me extraordinary that so many young girls, black and white and every colour, believe that, have believed in this kind of objectified notion of, of femininity. And by promoting that objectified notion, they can be a celebrity overnight or, you know, I'm a, on, on some reality TV show. And I think, as I said, I've made a speech about this poorly fine society. I, I'm old enough to be someone that was brought up believing that free sex was a liberation for me. And I still think fundamentally it's liberating. But in some ways that qualification and that sexualization has become a prison for, for someone else. Um, and we, we are now, we are saturated with imagery, both in advertising and on television, which 30 years ago we regarded as pornographic. And in as much as it objectifies women and encourages women to see themselves as objects, it is, it is not necessarily a good thing. I'm not saying I'm against naked women or anything like that, but I am saying we have to look at some of the pornified imagery that we're saturated with. Um, I suppose... In closing, I repeat the importance of feminism reaching out to women of all classes and all races. I will say how important it is that we watch for young girls in schools, but also we ourselves internalising um, sexist norms. And I suppose finally that you know the price of vigilance is eternal freedom. I table to no day motion um, on women being harassed at, 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 outside an abortion clinic because I feel very strongly about the issue of abortion. For instance, because it's one of those issues, unless you're prepared to fight for it every decade, you will lose the rights you have. So we've, we have made some practical economic advances as women, but there's terrible things going on in some girls' heads, and that's why what people are doing in schools is so important because it's so important that young girls growing up in places like this actually value themselves. Everything they're able to do with their lives will stem from not taking themselves at the estimation of a sexist and possibly racist society, but taking themselves at their own estimation and being proud of themselves as well.